Hey there, it's Stephanie Shea, Chief Astrologer for JanSpiller.com with your June Astrological Overview. Now, if you have seen the timeline of 2020's astrological events that I actually have up on the Jan Spiller website right now, um, it, you will see that June and July also are the most astrologically action-packed months this year. Uh, so if it feels like there is a lot going on when you look at the visual of the astrology, there is a lot going on. <laughs> so what we've got as we come into the month, we have been in a Venus retrograde cycle that started on May 13th. But the shadow phase of this was as early as April 10th. Some of you may have been feeling this as even as early as then. But if you didn't and it kicked in officially May 13th, we're in full swing with this astrology now. And I've done a whole separate video about Venus retrograde. If you haven't checked that out, you can learn more there. But in a nutshell, Venus is an inner planet. We feel these inner planet retrogrades a lot more personally than when the outer planets are retrograde. And Venus is the ruler of both love and money. And so in retrograde, it really is a time to reflect on these types of matters. Venus also rules our values. So a lot of people are reassessing that for themselves. And usually when we, you know, sort of readjust <laughs> and shift our own values, that can have a real impact on the relationships with everyone around us. And with this Venus retrograde in the sign of Gemini, communication is a big piece of it. Maybe there's these conversations that are wrapping up something from the past with somebody um, that you were in a former relationship with or in a current relationship and you finally just want to work through something so that you can put it to rest. Uh, this is all being supported under Venus Retrograde, as is completing creative projects that are already in progress. What's not really supported during Venus Retrograde is getting anything new off the ground, um, any big financial decisions or purchases, any big commitments uh, related to a partnership of business or personal <laughs> nature. That is a lot trickier during this time. If you can avoid it, I highly recommend it. There are some things you can do. I'm pretty practical with my astrology. So, you know, sometimes your computer breaks and you have to get something, uh, for example. That, that could be a big purchase. Um, get a really good warranty, <laughs> you know, uh, for relationship stuff. I've known people to get married during a Venus retrograde and they did just great but you got to be 100 percent on board <laughs> if you're at all on the fence it's definitely not good timing and i always advise people to even just privately restate their marriage vows once venus is direct and there's no other inner planet retrogrades that can kind of cement things a little more astrologically. So those are some navigation tips if you do already have something uh, that is happening in this time period like that. Now, the other retrograde this month is Mercury retrograde. So this is kind of a rarity, getting double inner planet retrogrades in one month. Mercury retrograde begins June 18th and it goes all the way through July 11th stationing direct on July the 12th. So this is a big deal to have both Venus and Mercury retrograde. If you didn't feel the slowing energy from Venus retro, you will surely feel it with Mercury coming in on top of that. And the difference between Venus and Mercury is that Mercury retrogrades are more common. They're a few times a year. And it's really about our intellect and um, kind of communication style. So there's that, that similarity with the Gemini going on in Venus retrograde. But Mercury retrograde is really about those misconnections, those misunderstandings, not being able to get logistically from A to B. This could be very frustrating. So we're all going to need a lot of extra patience this month. It could be time to revise your plan, maybe even go back to square one and redo something. And know that if you feel like 
you're reinventing something or redoing it, that it's always going to be stronger that, that second time through. You have the chance to get rid of whatever was going on in your previous plan that sort of caused things to get hung up. You're refining your vision so it can ultimately be more efficient in the future. But we're, we're in the thick of it now. So if it feels like that, you, uh, you'll know the astrology is, is doing its thing. Now, we've got two eclipses this month. This is also big astrological news. We get eclipses a couple times a year, usually in pairs. This year, 2020, is unique because there's six eclipses throughout the year. And, you know, most years you probably get four, maybe five. Six is a bit more of a rarity. And if we count the Christmas of 2019 solar eclipse, it was somewhat attached to the lunar eclipse that followed early um, in January of 2020. It's almost like there were seven. So eclipses are shift, they're change. If I see a year ahead like I did in 2020 with that many eclipses, I knew right away it was not going to be business as usual. <laughs> and I certainly didn't picture all the specifics of what was going to make all the disruptions and shifts this year. But here we are and we're kind of, again, in the thick of it. We've got a full moon lunar eclipse on June the 5th. And it's in the sign of Sagittarius. So Sagittarians may really feel this one, especially if you were born anywhere between December 5th to 9th, um, the degrees of this full moon eclipse are going to highlight where the sun was when you were born. And lunar eclipses are high-powered full moons. They bring generally information to light that maybe we hadn't seen or hadn't wanted to see, <laughs> is another thing. Um, and in the sign of Sagittarius, it's all about the bigger picture, the worldview, bigger philosophies, um, getting out of that tunnel vision. And Sagittarius is a sign that rules international relations and events. So on a big scale, we may see things being revealed about our interconnectedness, things that we didn't realize about our world. And on a personal level, it's definitely about opening up our vision um, to be more expansive and to make sure we're seeing the whole picture. So even if we don't like what we see, we're going to get some enlightenment around this time. And Jan's advice for full moons and especially full moon eclipses was always to wait a few days after the eclipse has passed. Uh, if you're feeling upset and want to initiate a conversation about something that came to light, because things will seem less dire even a few days after that full moon eclipse. Um, and I think that's <laughs> very good advice. Just uh, take note, it's important what you notice, but you'll be in a better position to discuss it when you're not right in the peak of that emotional energy of the lunar eclipse. Now our second eclipse this month coincides with the solstice. We have our solstice on the 20th this year. That lines up with the time that the sun ingresses into Cancer. This is global. The sun moves into Cancer at the June solstice, which in the northern hemisphere is the summer solstice. But for our friends down under, it's the winter solstice that either way, we're looking at some new Cancer energy. And this ushers in a time period to become more engaged in our lives, in our connections. Uh, it's a lot about coming from the heart. It's bringing in the next chapter of science being Cancer, Leo, Virgo. So think along those lines of getting out of your head and more into your heart. This new moon eclipse is going to occur for people on the East Coast, early wee morning hours of June 21st. Um, in the West Coast of the U.S., it's on the late night of the 20th. Either way, it's right around that solstice time. And it's highlighting that zero degree cancer, which is a very potent expression. It's a powerful time. New moons are always a great time for setting intentions. But the new moon eclipse is one of the most powerful times of the year. Even being in these retrograde cycles, there is power in setting down your intentions in words. It may just take a little longer 
to unfold. But you may be focusing on themes to deal with security, your home, your family. This probably doesn't sound shocking to anybody. Um, but cancer is also a lot about creativity and anything to do with nurturing growth. And so if there is, you're feeling this shift and you want a new idea, a new way of being, um, perhaps something, a new way of making money, all these types of things, the slow, steady growth that's nurtured, much like plants are nurtured, that is being supported at this new moon eclipse. <laughs> so that's um, the big stuff for this month. I think we will feel things um, maybe moving a little more forward. By the end of the month, we've got Mars planet of action moving into Aries on the 27th. And by that point, we will officially be out of the Venus retrograde cycle. So even though we're still in that Mercury retrograde, um, you may finally feel like you can get a couple things moving <laughs> forward and you can expect it to, to start moving more and more as we progress. Um, into July and out of that Mercury retrograde mid-July. And next month, I'll also tell you about a third eclipse of the summertime that's going to happen on July 5th. So it's action-packed around here. The best thing to do is take things day by day, step by step, and really use the reflective nature of the astrology dominating June to re-envision some uh, plans for yourself, some well thought out plans that may take a while, but in the long run are going to be a lot um, more successful and better. So <laughs> I hope that you can make the most of things and be well, be safe, and I'll see you back here next month with your astrological overview.